Coming up on Cardinals Insider. He's a great player. He's so well-rounded, great hitter. He's got power, hits for average, great defender. We highlight Cardinals shortstop Paul DeYoung. Plus, for me, I think it's probably just get better every day. I have things to work on, but trying to attack it more on a day-by-day -day basis. Get to know pitcher Jake Woodford. And later, this one's got a lot more to it. It's got an electronic message center, LED boards, as people would call it. We take a look at the new Big Mac land sign in left field. Welcome to Cardinals Insider. I'm Ozzie Smith. From his memorable walk-off homer in 2018 to breaking the M in Big Mac land in 2019, shortstop Paul DeYoung can deliver. DeYoung begins his fourth season as a Cardinal, and we ask the guys what they think of their powerful shortstop. And DeYoung can change it with one swing. Just one, baby, out of here. Paul DeYoung, three nothing, Redbirds. Paul DeYoung is one of my better friends on the team. Um, I love being around him. Uh, he just always has good energy. Great fielder, great guy. You know, we get along pretty well. He likes to hunt and fish like me, you know, so we got a lot of similarities in that department. And a liner caught. How about two? It's a double play. He timed it perfectly. Solid every part of the game, you know, defense, offense, on the bases. He's steady. He's super steady out there at shortstop. Um, great presence in the middle of our lineup. And, um, you know, he's, he's, he can go off, uh, hit a couple homers in the game at any point. High fly ball, deep left field at the wall. Gone! Two-run homer, Paul DeYoung. Paulie, uh, Paulie's the the kid, the nene. We call him the nene, or, or I call him the nene. Lined and caught. DeYoung was in a step or two, and that ball was tattooed, but right into his glove. He's just a great player. He's so well-rounded, great hitter. He's got power, hits for average, great defender. Um, not too flashy, but just makes every single play and just a really great player. Diving stop to Young and the pick by Goldschmidt. Takes a hit away. Straight ahead on Cardinals Insider. You know, you take your downtime and you kind of relax and you get your mind off baseball and then you slowly just work back into it. Step on the mound with Jake Woodford. Also coming up, this is Matt Carpenter's Magic Salsa. Look back on one of our favorite stories from the past. Here's a 1-1. Wong out to right. He may have done it. It is gone. Walk it off. What a way to cap off the 1,000th game regular season in Bush Stadium history. A walk-off from Colton Wong. Here's another pitch for uh, Wong. Swing it along one. Get up, baby. Get up, get up, get up, get up. Good night, folks. We've done it again. A walk-off home run by Colton Wong. A lead-off home run here in the ninth inning. The second time the Cardinals have had a walk-off in this series. And Wong is the recipient as he touches the ball. And the Cardinals win it 3-2. How about that? Bases loaded, the next two, Paul Goldschmidt. And a fly ball, out to deep right. How about it, how about it? Grand slammer! And a little fist pump from Goldschmidt. He delivers a grand slam here in the 10th. And St. Louis has a 6-2 lead. He needed that, the Cardinals needed that. A grand slam, Paul Goldschmidt. 2-1 pitch. And DeYoung sends one out to deep left. Dickerson back near the wall. It is gone! It's a home run and we're tied at two. And DeYoung hits it out to left center. It's at the wall. Goodbye! Paul 
Goldie Young, his second two-run homer tonight. And the Young hits one out to deep center at the wall. It's gone. Paul DeYoung does it again. It's a three home run night for the Cardinals All-Star shortstop to dead center field. Paul DeYoung, three home runs. Jake Woodford was recently recalled from the alternate training site in Springfield. Let's take the mound with this young arm for this week's player profile. For me, I think it's probably just get better every day. You know, I definitely know I have things to work on, uh, but trying to attack it more on a day-by-day -day basis of just getting a little bit better every single day at those things. I think uh, is something that will benefit me this year. Definitely does help your confidence. I think it's also just a little reassuring, you know, times um, you know, you're facing guys that maybe are veterans that you've, you know, grown up watching and stuff like that. When you actually play against them, and, you know, maybe have a little success in spring or an exhibition game, whatever it is, um, kind of just reassures you that, you know, you're talented as well. I'm from Tampa, so I still stay in Tampa and train my family's there and um, other than that I just try and get on the water a little bit and fish and go to the beach and play golf kind of do a lot of stereotypical Florida things but uh, yeah for me it's just enjoying the downtime kind of unwinding and recharging everything and finding what you need to work on and attacking it uh, I think it's just kind of a gradual build up you know you take your downtime and you kind of relax and you get your mind off baseball and then you slowly just work back into it piece by piece, um, focus on movement you know, first and correcting things that kind of went wrong in the season and then slowly you kind of build that into throwing and getting off the mound and it's just kind of just trying to keep it as gradual as you can. In just a bit on this week's Ask a Cardinal. I don't know if I could and maybe not, but if he's the one guy that I could slip a dunk on, that'd be nice. Stay with us. Every once in a while, we look back on one of our favorite stories from the past. Let's do that now as we head into the Cardinals Insider Archive. This is Adam Wainwright from the St. Louis Cardinals, and we are about to take some of Carp's Magic Salsa to Vladimir Tarasenko, the St. Louis Blues. Vladdy, hey. how are you, buddy? Good to see you. All right, so. This is very important stuff. This is Matt Carpenter's Magic Salsa, and this is what a lot of people think turned our season around. So, we're not giving it to you, because we still, we still need some, but we are gonna share some with you. So, thank you. You can have some of the Magic Salsa. Let's go Blues. Thank you very much. All right, can I see this? Let me see a, a little bit of this. Just, just like this? Yeah, just, yeah, just gotta work on your, like your, it's like just a, a fake form? chip. Yeah, fake chip form. Yep, yep. A little, little, little deeper. I need a, a little, little more scoop. Yep. Perfect. <laughs> All right. Okay. Good luck. It's actually pretty good. It's really good. No, I'm like honestly really good. So it's not <laughs> not because of the cameras. So we can have this this one, right? <laughs> Salsa party today. The Cardinals have a long and storied history, but some moments stand out. In fact, certain days changed Cardinals history, like this one. The date was February 20th, 1953. With Cardinals owner Fred Sy facing tax evasion charges, he sold the ball club to another St. Louis icon, Anheuser-Busch. Now congratulations to an order for you, Colonel Bush, for the fine thing that you have done in, in uh, buying the St. Louis Cardinals. 
Well, thank you very much. We're delighted to be the owners of the Cardinals, and we're going to try to give the fans everywhere the finest baseball that is known in the United States. The eccentric Gussie Bush wasn't much of a baseball man, but with Cy considering all options, Bush jumped in to prevent the Cardinals from moving to Milwaukee or Houston. Gussie grew to love the game and took pride in being the Cardinal owner. St. Louis in 1964 is celebrating the 200th anniversary of its founding. The club hadn't won the pennant in nearly 20 years, but in 1964, they snapped that two-decade drought and won the National League. And the Cardinals, one oh, no strike, come on! If you've never heard Mr. Gussie Bush excited, you just heard him over my shoulder. Let's go! Get him out! A high pop ball! The club is there! The Cardinals won the pennant! 64 became the first of six NL pennant winners and three world champions during the brewery's ownership. Gussie, to you, Whitey, to you, Daryl, to you and all your teammates, Joe, to you as general manager, the trophy that says you're champions of the world and you deserve it. Uh, thank you, boy. Thank, thank you very much, my friend. That's marvelous. The brewery also purchased Sportsman's Park from the St. Louis Browns, renaming it Bush Stadium. Then in 1983, Anheuser-Busch took opening day pageantry to a whole new level, sending the world-famous hometown Budweiser Clydesdales around the warning track for the very first time. AB sold the club in 1996, but the two legendary brands remain synonymous. And it all goes back to February 20, 1953, the day Anheuser-Busch bought the Cardinals, and a day that changed Cardinals history. For Cardinals Insider, I'm Brett McMillan. After the break, learn about the new STL logo. Have you listened to the Cardinals Insider podcast yet? Each week, the show welcomes players, executives, and alumni. Plus, hear audio from the Cardinals radio archives. Take Cardinal baseball with you on the Cardinals Insider podcast. Listen or subscribe wherever you get your podcast, or at cardinals.com slash podcast. Did you know the STL logo has changed? There's just a few subtle differences this year, but the iconic logo did get a refresh late in 2019. Here's more from team president Bill DeWitt III. I think for me, I've always been a very visual person. Before I got my MBA, I was a, an art history major in undergrad. In the case of the Cardinals brand, we inherited something with 100 years of history and 100 years of evolution and it was really a difficult decision to mess with it at all because it's so iconic. As stewards of the franchise, we also need to recognize when that kind of gets a little off track or if there are some updates that we think could enhance the, the already existing great brand. And that's kind of what we've done over the years. The current version, or the one that we changed recently, and it was pretty stable for, for a number of years, probably about 25, 30 years. But we were looking at some things that we were going to use that logo for, in particular a large sign in the uh, Ballpark Village Plaza, and it occurred to me that there were some odd aspects to the logo and some inconsistencies that were somewhat irregular, and as I did my homework with the graphics folks, I, I came to realize that some of these inconsistencies were a result of the fact that over time in the old method, before there was digital, logos could just sort of evolve and change based on kind of the old telephone uh, concept of you copy something and give it to somebody and they do something and then he copies it and gives it to somebody and they do something and so logos can morph and change. And it was clear that there were certain aspects of that STL that had morphed and changed unintentionally. For example, the, the serif on the T, the top of the T. In many cases, it was a sloped side to the top of the T, and in other cases, it was flat. On the top of the S, it, as it swirled up, it was a super um, sharp point. And yet at the bottom of the S, which you would think would be the mirror image of the top, um, it didn't have that at all. Uh, we also had some situations where the, the L was ending in a funny way, and then there were some thick and thin issues. 
we've, we've done that large STL down there um, as a way for people to get that photo op. For us, it's also such a part of not just the Cardinals brand, but the St. Louis brand. I mean, STL stands for St. Louis. So I think it's really not just for baseball fans. It's for people just visiting St. Louis. It's for residents. It's for anybody that kind of wants to essentially say, here I am in the heart of St. Louis and also at Ballpark Village. Last season, Paul DeYoung hit a ball into the Big Mac land sign and broke the M. So this season, we decided to replace the whole thing. Take a look. And a young can change it with one swing. Just one, baby. Out of here. Last season, Paul DeYoung hit a homer deep into left field. The blast blew out the M in Big Mac land. The old sign went up in 1998 at Bush 2. So this season, the Cardinals decided to replace the broken sign with a new one. This one's got a lot more to it. It's got an electronic message center, LED boards as people would call it. Uh, you can light all the interior of all the letters up with anything you want. Fireworks, bright colors, whatever you guys want. The french fries being all neon, two different colors of neon on them. Uh, they're about six and a half feet tall. The new sign is double the size, triple the weight, and 46 feet wide, leaving plenty of room for more home runs. Swing and a long one to left field for DeYoung, and that goes to Big Mac land. We got a couple 20 foot, 26 foot trailers. We got to take the french fries off. They won't fit through the wagon gates of the stadium without the french fries on it, so we'll have to take them off to get it through. We've got a couple big cranes we got down there, a bunch of guys that are going to do it. They're going to probably pick the main thing up off the, the trailers, mount the french fries, and pick it up all one piece. And after that, it shouldn't take no time to get it up. Once it's picked up off the trailers and mounted, it should go together really fast. My family company, the Warren Sign Company, uh, I've been here for 30 years and I've got to experience the whole Cardinals and doing the signs for that long. It's been really very neat. Uh, it's been a great part to be a part of it, seeing all the Mark McGuire through the new scoreboards, the old scoreboards, all the changes in this stadium, how much fun it has been for our whole shop and our, the whole family, I guess, being part of the Cardinals through all these years. It's been a lot of fun and especially to bring this new sign out, it's gonna be really neat. So when you're watching the game from home, take a look at the all new Big Mac land sign. For Cardinals Insider, I'm Emily Stevens. Coming up, I answer one of your questions during Ask Ozzy. The Cardinals captured a division championship in 2019, and they're after another NL Central crown in 2020. The Cardinals media guide is an essential for any St. Louis baseball fan. All the notes you could need for the 2020 season and a great keepsake to remember the 2019 Redbirds. Get your copy at the Cardinals team stores inside Bush Stadium or visit cardinals.com slash media guide. It's time for this week's Ask Ozzy. John Luke from New York wants to know why was playing for the Cardinals so special to you? Well, it was special because of the people. The people have always made it a great experience to come to the ballpark. It's the reason I've made this place my home. Just the idea of coming to the ballpark every day and some of the teams that I played on were exceptional teams, knowing that we would find a way to win. It was exciting baseball. Uh, I have people all the time talk about the excitement that was created in the 80s and it was always fun to be a part of that. Thanks for the question, John Luke. If you want to submit a question, head on over to cardinals.com insider and click on the Ask Ozzy tab and we'll be right back.
On this week's Ask a Cardinal, we asked the guys which teammate they think they could dunk on. I think you'll enjoy what they had to say. All of them? I don't think one I can't dunk on. <laughs> Probably Wayno. Because <laughs> he'd be the hardest one to, to dunk on, given his height. So, yeah, probably Wayno. Probably dunk on Brebia. Yeah, for sure. My vertical is, or we're assuming I can jump high enough to dunk. Because if I can't, then it would be nobody. Because my vertical is maybe a few inches. It's pretty bad. I'm not, a, I'm not an up jumper. I'm a sideways jumper. Who do I want to dunk on? I would want to dunk on um, Flaherty, because Flaherty talks all the time. <laughs> uh, I mean, I think the guy that I'd like, you know, Flaherty talks a lot of junk about his basketball ability, so I think he'd be the guy that I don't know if I could, and maybe not, but if he's the one guy that I could slip a dunk on, that'd be nice. I would love to, because that would just be fun for me. He likes to talk a lot, um, and he thinks he can jump a little bit, but I would love to dunk on Hells. I think I'd take Wayno just so I could, you know, brag about it and make him, uh, you know, reminisce all the time, bring it up and bring him down. Teammate I would like to dunk on are any of these young fellas that think I'm too old to do that kind of stuff. I'd love to dunk on Jack. That would be great, you know, because he, he uh, is such a great athlete and he's got way more vertical leap than I do. So if, I, if that happened, I would have to make a poster of it. That's it for this episode. You can always catch us online at cardinals.com insider and on YouTube. And we'll see you next week.